Hey everyone, my name is Andre, and a couple of years ago I saw a video by the amazing JJ McCullough where he drew a couple different US presidents, and that inspired me to draw the presidents myself. And today I'm lucky enough to be joined by JJ himself. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, basically, what we were going to do is I was going to show JJ a couple of the presidents that he inspired me to draw a few years ago and some of the ones that I did today. I will admit I have no drawing ability. <laughs> um, I, I do my best, but I thought it'd be cool to have a more talented artist and cartoonist as, such as yourself take a look at them. Wow. I look forward to seeing. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're great. This is one That's of the good. ones that I'm better at, honestly. Yes. Well, I mean, Trump is very, uh, very easy to draw because he's such a sort of living caricature. But this is this is a good one. I like it. I like how you kind of got his his chubby sort of bloated face, and he Trump has quite sort of squinty little eyes that I think you captured quite well as as well. And I like his uh, his little sort of puckered mouth. I think that uh, <laughs> that is well captured. And of course the the hair, and you got the hair in the back too, which is you don't often sort of see Trump from the side, so we can sort of like lose track just of how weird his hair in, is in the back in addition to the, <laughs> the front. Like he has this like long kind of almost sort of mullet-like sort of tail at the back of his hair, which I think you did a good job capturing. So yeah, this is a really, uh, this is a good one. I like it a lot. The only thing it's missing is of course the, uh, the orange skin. Yeah, if you believe it or not, when I was drawing it, I did a bit of a voiceover and I was mentioning how people neglect his mullet. <laughs> the, yeah. This is like very yes. weird thing there. And I, I thought it was, well, because I, I kind of, when I draw, the first thing I draw is always like the emphasis of it. Mm. Like I, I very much, whenever I drew Trump, I would start with his hair and kind of build the rest of the drawing from there. Okay, yeah. this is Biden. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> fun. Okay, so you drew him, uh, you didn't draw him with the sunglasses, which I feel like is kind of the, uh, the shorthand cliche that most cartoonists uh, use when they're depicting him. He also, he looks pretty, uh, he looks pretty robust. You have a lot, uh, gave him a lot more hair than I think he, he, actually, he actually has. I struggle to draw the sort of balding that he is. I, yeah. I wasn't really sure how to portray that. If I was, if I was drawing this, like the face is, is really quite good. I think you actually captured sort of like the way that his smile looks. He has, he has a, he has a, a good smile, a nice smile, I would say. And I think you captured that well, the way with the squinty eyes and sort of the big broad white teeth. I think that the only thing that would make it look like, I think the resemblance would be improved if you just kind of hook in the hair a little bit, like if you made it closer, because his hair is, is, is short and relatively tight to his head. And he has quite like mm. a sort of thin, kind of like narrow head. And uh, I think the way that you drew the hair kind of like thickens out the head a, a bit more than it should probably be. But it's it's still it's it's still quite good, yeah. Oh, thank you. I, I remembered from your video actually, or I'm not. It probably wasn't the same video, but it was one where you mentioned the sunglasses, and that's something I kept in oh, mind. Yeah. But I feel like I drew a lot of presidents with um, squinty eyes, so I wanted. Yeah. I, I guess it kind of it, it's a little easier for me if I did the sunglasses. It might not have come out as well. A lot of presidents do have squinty eyes. I mean, I think it just comes from. From grinning all the time, you know, when you when you have a big smile, you know, your eyes tend to sort of get a little uh, sort of crumpled up, <laughs> and I think that's why, uh, especially when you're older, as of course many presidents are. This is Nixon. <laughs> that's pretty funny. With the big, I mean, Nixon is like such a sort of cliched sort of character at this point, with the heavy mm -hmm. eyebrows and the long nose. He's actually a little, little restrained by, uh, by Nixon standards. I mean, so many of the caricatures of him became so extreme and so grotesque. The thing that I would mm. say, though, is that Nixon has quite, quite a big forehead. So mm. I think that normally the eyes would be sort of like lower down in the face to sort of like emphasize the forehead, whereas you have the eyes quite high up in the forehead. A lot of times people give his, make his jowls kind of more ample as well, in the sense of like yeah. making the mouth smaller so that there's more sort of jowl space people kind of like draw his face in this kind of like figure eight sort of way where they have uh you know a big forehead nixon also had like you did you kind of did i don't know if this is like a widow's peak or what it's called exactly but like nixon has mm -hmm. like this weird sort of like little uh little bit of hair that kind of comes down from the top of his head in like little little squiggles so i feel like a lot of times people like draw him 
like this, like with like a big forehead and then like a small little mouth in, in, in sort of a sea of ample jowls. Yeah. It's a very peanut shaped head. Yeah. And then of course, always just the kind of, just kind of like a dark, I, I kind of, I didn't even really draw him with enough hair. Like I was sort of saying like Nixon has a lot of hair. He's mm -hmm. not balding in any, especially when he was actually even up until the end of his life. So actually if I was to, and Nixon's like the shape of his hair is kind of weird too. Like sort of the, his hairline, I'm not even quite drawing it exactly right, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe more like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, N Nixon's very weird looking and he's one that I also drew. So we're, we're going to have two Nixons. Oh yeah. You so, have another Nixon. So in my defense, I drew this one on a computer with a trackpad. <laughs> That's pretty good. Nixon. I like that. So you've got, you've got bigger, uh, bigger jowls in this one. Which I think mm. helps the uh, the resemblance, and you you have his sort of full head of hair as I think captured better better than the way that I drew it as well. The handcuff is a fun is a fun touch. And you got him doing the the peace signs, which is of course his iconic symbol, and mm. uh, and he has big ears. Nixon had had pretty large ears, which I think was something that he was self conscious about. A lot of times caricaturists don't make a big deal of his of his large ears because there's just so many other big things going on in his face. <laughs> So uh, I guess it can become a little overwhelming if you do too much of it. So like this was a cartoonist from, uh, from I think it was from a Canadian cartoonist from like the 1970s. And look mm. at that Nixon. Do you see it on the far right end? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Just looking at how big his, uh, he looks like a sort of a mm. kind of hang dog sort of. And your, your Nixon, your colored Nixon kind of has that similar sort of like dog. I was going to say, I feel like a lot of the characters of Nixon kind of have the bottom of his face really pushed forward and the back of his head, like shrinking yes. towards the back of it. Let me show you this. This is a caricature of him from, uh, from Gerald Scarf, who's one of my favorite cartoonists, a uh, British cartoonist in like the, in the sixties. And look at the, oh, wow. the crazy yeah, exaggeration of. <laughs> I, I see what you mean about them being a lot less flattering to him. Jeez. It's oh. like his, his jowls are like literally on the ground. <laughs> I've always liked this one. This is one by Al Hirschfeld, who's like a very famous uh, uh, American cartoonist. This is like a, a cartoon of Nixon at the Eisenhower inauguration when he was vice president. So he's a little bit younger in this in this cartoon. I just really like like the intensity of his his eyes in this cartoon, like just how sort of like that's a very sort of like. Yeah, it's just it's mm. some, somewhat different than the way Nixon is often drawn, but I think you can still see that it's identifiably Nixon. Mm. Yeah, that makes me interested. Well, because I recently made a video about Nixon and his his relationship with other presidents that he met throughout his life. Yeah, and now that you're bringing up the caricatures, it sort of makes me think of how how different drawings would have portrayed him throughout his political career, like when he was senator mm -hmm. or vice president compared to like the very supervillain-esque Nixon that <laughs> we're yes. familiar with today. Well, actually, I remember like, I remember seeing this cartoon of, of, of Nixon in a collection of Al Hirschfeld cartoons where he sort of had little annotations and talked about like his reflections on the different drawings he had done. And I remember he said that, you know, when, when he did this drawing, this was when Nixon was vice president and he obviously didn't, know what Nixon would get up to later in his political career. <laughs> but Hirschfeld sort of said that, like, you know, this cartoon sort of proves that, you know, in some ways, I don't know, character is destiny. Hirschfeld believes strongly that, like, sort of people's personalities are kind of reflected in their appearance. And so I guess he would sort of say that, like, the kind of, like, ominous, foreboding way that Nixon looks in this cartoon of him being sworn in as vice president was in some way a sort of harbinger of what he would get up to. Something that I wanted to get your opinion on too, especially since you mentioned Nixon's ears, is that it wasn't yeah. until I started drawing them that I realized how similar Richard Nixon and Lyndon Johnson kind of look. No, very much so. And uh, that was something that cartoonists at the time had some fun with because like mm -hmm. as Nixon, you know, with Vietnam and stuff like this, like as people sort of felt like Nixon was not a bold new president, but was just kind of part of the same system, making the same mistakes. People would sometimes do cartoons that like showed Nixon morphing into Lyndon Johnson and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I don't know if, if it's that specific one, but there's one where it's JFK walking upright and then it um, mm. transitions into Lyndon, Lyndon Johnson hun hunched over and then Richard Nixon like all the way yes. down. Uh, that's what yes, I've yes. always been really fond of. That's a that's a cartoon by David Levine, I think. There is a there's a, a Quebec cartoonist who is still around to this day. Asseline is his name. 
and uh, he did cartoons of Nixon that I always really liked because uh, they really sort of played up his ears in a way that other cartoonists <laughs> did not. And like he would draw him with like, like these sort of like really big kind of like layering mm. ears that were often kind of pointy in a kind of devilish way, which then sort of like played into his sort of demonic uh, persona. So like here's oh, Nixon, wow. sort of, I guess like stabbing at the world, but you see how he has these sort of like pointy <laughs> devil ears. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go ahead and send you my Johnson. I'm not too okay. happy with how this one came out. And I think it actually ended up looking a little more like, like, like Nixon than I personally would have liked. -like. Yeah, yeah. I definitely messed up that ear. Oh my God. I think this is, I think this is pretty recognizably Johnson. If you'd, if you'd asked me which president it was, I would have guessed it. The thing about Johnson from a sort of cartoon perspective is I think that he had like kind of small beady eyes and that's mm. something that I think a lot of the cartoons of him tend to, uh, tend to play up. Mm. Um, I, I, beady or, or dare I say, uh, squinty eyes. Like so yeah. many of, uh, of our of our favorite presidents. Also, people played up his eyebrows a lot more. Like that that like that he had like these kind of like really overbearing eyebrows that in some ways kind of like almost hid his his eyes behind. Anyway, here's a cartoon from that same cartoonist, the Canadian cartoonist who drew uh, who drew the the picture of Nixon with the big jowls. But look at uh, look at this crazy exaggeration oh of Johnson's Jeez. ears. And they it almost looks like a butterfly, like butterfly wings. <laughs> yes, more so. Do, do you know the one with, um, I think it was a pretty famous one with the map on his stomach that he's pointing to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was David Levine as well. That's a, that's a classic oh. of the, uh, because that was, um, that was a very famous uh, moment. Do you know that, that moment? I, actually, I'm not super mm. well versed in it as a sort of bit of presidential, you know, sort of symbology, right? Which was that, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, but he was like doing an interview. He had had like an operation recently. And he sort of like lifts up his shirt mm. to show off the the scar, right? Yeah, that's exactly the, what I was talking about. And and that yeah, I, yeah. I like my um my digital version of Johnson considerably more than the other one that I did. I it, it's a lot more oh, yeah. amateur probably, but I like the the jowls on his face. I feel like that I could have probably you see, played that up with Nixon a little better. When you look at the other cartoons of Johnson, both the David Levine one and the and the other one, you see the degree to which they will always place his mouth like very high up on his head, like mm. cl quite close to his nose. So it's like he sort of has this big, yeah, big sort of like jowly chin. Uh, whereas Nixon's uh, mouth was very low on his head because like Nixon mm. had less sort of like long upper lip, and Johnson had a very short uh, upper lip. I'm uh, I'm trying to find this one cartoon that I liked of Lyndon Johnson and Harold Wilson. Harold Wilson was the Prime Minister of Great Britain, who was sort of mm. seen as being his, uh, his, his lapdog on Vietnam. Here's the cartoonist by Gerald Scarf, who again is one of my favorite cartoonists. So you see it's uh, Lyndon Johnson and then Harold Wilson, the British Prime Minister, sort of like grabbing at his pants. But you see how Johnson is depicted as having like these really big ears and kind of sort of squinty eyes. And then it's kind of just sort of like craggly, like thin jowls neck, you know? Johnson was just like, just an ugly old man in a way. It's very hard to imagine a president being today, you know? Well, a lot of the trouble that Johnson had throughout his career was not being very good at presenting himself publicly, despite being a very good background player. So hmm. <laughs> just being a honestly like remarkably ugly man coming right after yes. kennedy like yes both yes. both in personality and in appearance was just one of those things that was a little too perfect for history i feel in order to yes. draw a contrast i really enjoy this caricature of johnson that i think sort of um shies away from a couple of the tendencies that we've been talking about i i like the simplicity of this i feel that i tend to really enjoy the simple ones this one captures the beady eyes that you talked about but it has a little less yes. of the ears like th this is the most restrained i've ever seen johnson's ears personally <laughs> <laughs> and they, but I, they have him with uh with with dark hair like that he hasn't gone gray yet which is also very flattering compared to how he mm -hmm. actually was david levine was uh was a cartoonist for the new york uh, review of books and uh he was famous for his many cartoons of Johnson. In fact, that cartoon of Johnson exposing the, the Vietnam scar is probably like one of the most famous cartoons that he ever 
did and one of the most notorious cartoons of Johnson. Right, here's a cartoon <laughs> of, uh, of Nixon, but the mm. joke here is that you look at like Nixon's hairline and it's the silhouette of Lyndon Johnson. Oh, I didn't even notice that. You see that? It. Yeah, yeah, it's subtle, eh? So it's kind of yeah, it's kind of cool. But you see that, like you know, the the caricature of of Johnson is just sort of defined by you know that kind of bulbous nose and mm. uh, and the 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 hair is yeah. like Johnson's hair was like very slicked back, right? Which is when have you ever seen like Johnson when he stopped being president, like for the brief period of time before his death? And then he kind yeah, of grew his the, hair long, and he just kind of looked like this weird cowboy kind of guy. Yeah. Mm. There's actually a photo of him when he was younger that I'm going to try to look for where his hair is pretty crazy as well. Uh, not yeah. not crazy in the same way as his post-presidency hair was. I, I believe this was when he was running for Congress and he wouldn't take any time off to have his appendix removed despite being ridiculously sick. I think his appendix ended up bursting like two days before the election and it was the first election that he ever ran and it was this whole oh, like wow. un he was in unimaginable pain the entire time just pushing through it i think this is the least happy that i am with any of the drawings i really okay. really struggle to draw jfk i for the life yeah. of me i don't know what it is about him but i just can't do it uh, this is a pretty bad drawing if i do say so myself <laughs> jfk i mean you make him look kind of old and haggard here i mean the thing the thing is that jfk was obviously like uh a good looking man. He was handsome. I remember the onion in the onion, our dumb century, they commemorate mm -hmm. his election where they're like our first handsome president. This is actually a problem that I find that some sort of young artists make when they're trying to draw people or trying to do caricatures of them is that they draw mm -hmm. too many lines on the face. Right. And yeah. uh, because there's often this attitude to where it's like, you know, to do a better drawing requires more lines. And therefore, like the mm. more lines you add, the better the resemblance will be. But oftentimes, the more lines you add, just sort of like the more aged the person starts to look. Because uh, Kennedy was young and handsome, I think the, the right approach is to like use as few lines as possible. So if you just sort of cut down the number of lines, like the lines under the eyes and the lines on the, the jowls and all that kind of thing, the resemblance would probably be stronger. Uh, well, the funny thing about it is that I, like, I was trying to play up the sort of illness of Kennedy, the yeah. like trying to present himself at like he was okay, but knowing that he was in that like insane amount of pain and just yes. the physical health problems that he endured. And I think I ended yes. up making him look a lot older. But I think that in the digital drawing, I do a bit better of a job of making him still look young okay. while perhaps just looking <laughs> yeah. like he's suffering a little bit. Yes, that's pretty good. I like that one. I'd say that think, uh, Kennedy's like one of, I mean, he didn't have a lot of sort of like exaggerated features. I tried drawing a little one, kind of drawing sort of like the sort of the clone high kind of like style look, you know? <laughs> Where it's like yeah. the slanty, like the sort of the slant of his eyes and his eyes are kind of like never quite in focus. Like they're kind of off center a little bit. Uh, I mean, he had big hair, so people played up the big hair. A lot of times people played up his forehead a lot as well. Let's see, look, this one, this is, I guess somebody spilled something on this version of this cartoon. But uh, I like this one because uh, it's a sort of a joke about Castro, but you can see it has all of the different presidents. Don't worry, Fidel Castro will fall any minute now, they all say in succession. But you can see the, the JFK one is, is kind of an interesting look because it's sort of playing up his teeth and his hair. And, wow, that, uh, that almost like, looks more like Trump to me. Huh, yeah, I guess it kind of does actually. Now that you mention it. I once actually made a website many, many years ago. I did a website that was just a collection of JFK cartoons. Since we think of him now as sort of like, you know, the sainted, martyred president, we sort of forget that there was a time in which he was just a president and people treated him with all of the disrespect that everybody treats all presidents. And uh, so it's kind of interesting to look at these some of these cartoons, particularly the ones that depict him in a very grotesque sort of way. So like, here's a oh, cartoon wow. from uh, Gerald's scarf, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. you can see he sort of looks kind of skeletal and ape-like, but you can also <laughs> sort of see how, like, again, like what he plays up is like sort of the out of focus eyes, the big forehead, and that, that sort of curled lip with the big sort of teeth, like that he doesn't really mm -hmm. quite have a natural sort of smile. This was a cartoon from a cartoonist here in Canada, uh, uh, Duncan McPherson, who was in the Toronto Star, and uh, this is him with the Canadian prime minister of the time. I kind of like oh. the uh, the big teeth and the and the hair yep. and the kind of like weird little squinty eyes.
He almost reminds me of the of the guy from the Mad Cartoon in that one. Oh, Alfred E. Newman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, actually. Someone could do a well, good cartoon of Kennedy as Alfred E. Newman. Now that you mention it, I'm actually surprised that more contemporary cartoons of Kennedy didn't play up the boyishness of him yeah. or being particularly young, which is something I've always found in cartoons of Bobby Kennedy, is they always make him mm. look very young and very childish, but I don't think that's something I've noticed with oh, yes. JFK. Yeah, oh, that's an interesting cartoon. Yeah, yeah they always is, do I the guess... really buff buck teeth this one this one here kind of reminds me a bit of uh of his uh of his kid you can see that he looks <laughs> this one he looks a bit like rfk jr i can see the family resemblance through this uh through this cartoon mm -hmm. bill clinton is okay. another one that was kind of funny for me to draw just because i feel like mm -hmm. he's almost hard to because he's so normal looking he's so just yes. standard president to me but this was the best that i i could do and this is one <laughs> where i actually fun. I like the the drawing that I did today better than the paper yeah. than the digital one that I had done of Clinton a while back as well. Though they're kind of similar. Now that I look at oh, them, yeah, that's a good similar. Clinton. I like that one. That looks very. Uh, I mean, in that in that second one, I think you have sort of the shape of his head better. My mentor was like a a, a good cartoonist, and I remember I would hang out with him sometimes. And that was uh, when Kennedy was, uh, or not when Kennedy, when when Clinton was in office. And I remember him once like drawing a little cartoon of. Uh, of Bill Clinton, and he was showing me just kind of like how easy Clinton is to draw, and it was just kind of like this, you know. <laughs> it's just kind of like he just had like this big sort of teardrop face and just like big round nose and like just a little little like puff of hair up at the top, and like that was by the end of his presidency, like that was basically how Clinton was rendered in like all uh, political cartoons and stuff. Like it was like a real. In some ways, it was like a real sort of like shorthand. And I think even to this day, I, I don't think I've ever seen a president that could be reduced to something quite so simple. Like literally, like sometimes you'd just see like cartoons and it would just be like like this. And you would immediately like know that that's, that's the president of the United States. Like it's, he had in some ways the most mm -hmm. geometric face. I don't know what you could say. Like just shapes, you know. See, that makes me think of Clinton today because I feel that he looks a little more different than he did yeah. when he was president compared to how most presidents probably keep a bit of a similar look throughout their lives. I'm curious mm. on how you would draw, draw um, Clinton today, just because I feel like mm. that shorthand doesn't really apply to him as much anymore. His face is not nearly as plump. He's this sort of like old haggard man when yeah. it's funny because even at, if he was a little bit more overweight, it sort of made him look more robust and more vigorous. Yeah. No, it's true. It's, uh, let me, I wonder if I could like just draw him from, from memory, sort of like contemporary, because it's true. He is kind of like more, more gaunt. He still has a lot of hair. <laughs> it's kind of grotesque looking, <laughs> but I feel like he's, he's sort of a little bit more like this <laughs> kind of thing now. Like That's very like good. a thinner, a thinner kind of jowlier kind of face yeah maybe with some maybe some maybe some forehead wrinkles but yeah something like that now that i think about it you could probably find political cartoons of him in, from the 2016 campaign yeah i guess so yeah because he would have been a character in that in that whole uh in that whole situation there's this one here where he's sort of hunched over he, he's skinny but he's almost sort of pig-like by his nose and his teeth and then <laughs> oh, yes i forget this cartoonist's name but i've seen a lot of uh i've seen a lot of his stuff over the years yeah he's got a pretty distinctive style look at this this is by bob stack who's one of my favorite cartoonists as well here's his like uh very stylized Bill Clinton. But look at this. He's also got one of uh, of RFK, which is kind of cool. That one, I would have thought that was a child if I didn't have any context for it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I drew an Obama as practice. And then I was like, yeah. okay, I, I kind of like this one. So I started drawing more around him. But then I could never draw an Obama that was as good as the first one. So I sort okay. of, this one's going to have the, the extras around it as well. Okay. So which one and is I your favorite like of, of, of these? It's the one in the center, the one with the neck. You kind of drew him sort of having a kind of Beatles looking haircut there. Oh, wow. No, no, I can't unsee that. I would always draw Obama with like uh, kind of curly hair. And he didn't really have, he had very shortly cropped hair, but sort of like with a kind of curly hairline as opposed to a sort of straight hairline as you drew him. And then like, yeah, I think that Obama's whole thing is like, he's got a big grin 
and he has a kind of big chin as well and of course he has big ears like obama was very self-conscious about his ears so i don't know like i would i usually drew obama as sort of something <laughs> like that yeah that's more, like a more here's, elf like obama yeah here's here, look here's an interesting one from that same cartoonist i just showed the previous two cartoons of bob stack this was a, a cartoon that he did i remember this this was on the cover of the new yorker you see it's like this kind of mm. this sort of distinctive shape of obama's head that i feel like you kind of get a bit of this in your in your drawing as well like the idea mm. that he has a kind of thin kind of almost sort of like skeletal head because he was very thin like he was like the thinnest president and he has a kind of like lankiness to him as well like even in my drawing i feel like i have to like sort of shape his chin a bit better to be kind of like more kind of bony look here this was a i remember this being a a, a toy actually remember this was a that was popular among sort of Obama haters during his presidency, which was this Obama squeeze doll. But I always mm. thought it was a kind of cool caricature of him because you yeah, can see how it is. just kind of has this very, this very sort of like, I don't know, like it's just the shape of his head mm. that's really played up. You know what I mean? Like it's just a very distinctive yeah. kind of. The, the, the funny thing, well, because when I was drawing Obama, I, I've always thought that Obama looked a, a lot like my dad. And, yeah. and that's always like sort of in, informed the way that I see Obama visually. And I think that in that last cartoon that you sent, Obama looks more like my dad than he looks like Obama, just given the, the head <laughs> yeah. shape. And believe it or not, when I was finishing up my Obama drawings, someone left a comment on one of my videos that said, no offense, but you look like Obama. And I was oh, like, really? me? I look, I look like Obama. And you, you might have the wrong person. And that is the end of the ones that I had from today, but I have a couple more that I drew beforehand. Th this Carter, I think, is pretty informed by the one that you did, if I recall. This is another one of my personal favorites. I feel like I <laughs> sort of captured him pretty well. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, there's not much. Uh, you even kind of got his sort of 70s haircut to <laughs> down quite well <laughs> yeah i think that's one of the later drawings that i did also so i did get a little bit better at it by then i mean jimmy carter like near the end of his presidency people really made him uh grotesque in terms of just like how dominated <laughs> by his teeth his cartoon the cartoons were and actually well i mean and i think i talked about this in my video is that like there was kind of like two versions of carter that like people would either draw him with the giant grin or they would draw him sad and then he would have giant like pursed lips you know mm -hmm. like this was this was one of the the mike peters uh cartoons with with jimmy carter uh you can just see like how defined it is by just the giant teeth and nothing else pretty fun mm -hmm. i wonder if i can find a uh, pat oliphant who was uh one of the great sort of american cartoonists mm -hmm. in the 20th century he did uh, Jimmy Carter's that could be pretty grotesque because he really didn't like Jimmy Carter. He also, <laughs> Jimmy Carter was not that, was not, was not very short, but a lot of times cartoonists would draw him as like this tiny little uh, wisp of a man. I think he probably had a more boyish figure, if anything. Like he had a yeah. bit smaller of a frame, even if he wasn't necessarily very short. The other thing too, is like, and this is kind of like funny to think about now, just because of, like the way that sort of Christian nationalism and all that has sort of taken over in the Republican Party. But like in Jimmy Carter's own time, like a lot of people and like the press and like critics framed him as being like this like obnoxiously overbearing Christian. Like he was so like uptight. And and in this cartoon, for example, <laughs> by Pat Oliphant, you can see he's like depicted as like a Puritan, like that he's just so like moralizing mm. and moralistic. Or as like a, and then of course, because he was from the South, which was also considered like remarkable at the time, like the deep South, that he was often portrayed as a, as a hick as well. So here's another cartoon by Pat Oliphant with him as a, as a sort of hick. And yeah, uh, those are all lips. Yeah, but you see that, like how just defined by the lips and in the second one, the teeth. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, oh, and of course, the, uh, I've recently got some comments for the, uh, uh, the Jimmy Carter peanut I have in the background of my most recent video which is based on a statue of Jimmy Carter that uh, was built in his in his hometown. But you see, like, this is sort of like Jimmy Carter at, like, the most reductive caricature, where it's just lips. God, I, it's funny because I, I think he he's a little redeemed by history because I feel like we remember yes. those happy images of him as Mr. Peanut Farmer a lot more than the grotesque ones from the end of his presidency, like you said. <laughs> look at this, look at this little 
toy that somebody's selling of, of, of Jimmy Carter. That's that's great. That looks like I, I'd see it on your shelf, actually. Yeah, I would totally buy that if I saw it for sale. <laughs> I have Wilson up next, actually, if you want oh, to take a look at Wilson. that. Wilson, yeah. That, this is someone I actually am not familiar with political cartoons of at all. So this is something that I just did myself without any like mm. preconceived notions. Wilson sort of like was, I mean, he was president like just at the beginning of when sort of like modern cartooning was becoming a thing. Because, you know, like sort of b before sort of like the 20th century, all cartoons were usually like editorial cartoons, sort of like the, the Thomas Nast style of cartoons were very realistic and the exaggeration was, was pretty mild. I guess because in those days, like a lot of people, well, I mean, just the art hadn't really evolved, but also you just couldn't take for granted that people would be able to recognize like abstracted versions of people. Mm -hmm. So you tended to render them like as much like the lithographs or whatever that you would see in Harper's Weekly as possible. But Wilson was Wilson was probably like the first cartoonist that was rendered exaggerated or a sort of uh, stylistic sort of way. And I feel like when they did it, they kind of played up like sort of like his thinness, his his like the tallness and sort of like the, the mm. stiffness of his or like the rectangular sort of nature of his head. Uh, I tried to play up kind of more like supervillain aspects of the, oh, the yeah. way he appears, almost like Nixon did. Even if you could tell by the way that I wrote his name, I wanted it to be almost a, a bit like a vampire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, that's like a little vampire-like. <laughs> that, that's the way that I've always sort of conceived of him. Yeah, definitely. Like a lot of times they they played up his his glasses. He, he t had a big chin. I feel like you put his lips relatively far down on his face. And I think that normally the cartoons would put them up kind of like higher in his face. Like I'm, <clears throat> I'm thinking of how I would draw him. I mean, I don't, I don't even really like know Wilson. Like I don't have a good enough sort of mental image of him in my mind, but I feel like they would, again, like he was sort of seen in his own time. He was seen as this very sort of like stern and somewhat sort of puritanical guy like uh, sort of school marmish and uh, i don't know sort of something like this i'm not even quite sure how i would draw his his chin relative to his mouth but like they would often draw like sort of faces like this oftentimes they draw him with like his glasses being opaque in a way i guess sort of made him more seem soulless and often had like very sort of angry uh, eyebrows as well like that he mm. was just this kind of like mean but you did do the lips, and I feel like did, people did actually play up his lips a fair bit as well. The drawing you made of him sort of reminded me of um, American Gothic, the famous painting. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did put a, a cartoon of, of Wilson in my minimalist caricature video, I believe, where mm. it, was this, it was a cartoon of him in a, in a German magazine, and he had like spilling blood all over Latin America. And that was a that was a cartoon that I really liked. And I use that as a sort of like illustration of the kind of like the beginning of the modern sort of caricature era. I don't think it was in the minimalist one. It was in the the history of caricature one. Oh, wow. But see, like, again, it's like, it's sort of like, you know, just the kind of like the long and sort of like thin mm. kind of shape of his head and his sort of like yeah. arched eyebrows and all of that. Yeah, that reminds me of Slenderman, just looking at it. <laughs> it is a little this, Slenderman. This sort of like tall, brooding figure. You said that that was around when political cartoons started. So I have this drawing of Taft. I, I was wondering if he's someone that people might have exaggerated just given his size. I don't like, I think t like Taft was kind of like before kind of like stylized cartoons. So like mm. the extent that you saw cartoons of him, they would have just been pretty pretty faithful uh, depictions of what he looked like. Had, uh, Taft had very sort of squinty eyes as well. I feel like I drew him in one of my cartoons, in one of my videos, and yeah, it's just like the squinty eyes and of course the fatness and the big mustache. I was trying, well, what I had in mind initially was to try to draw every single president. So I started, yeah. Washington, Washington was the first president that I ever drew. And we'll get to the Washington drawing in a second. But I was like, after Washington, I was like, okay, I can't just always do the interesting ones. So the second president mm -hmm. that I ever drew for some ungodly reason was Ch Chester A. Arthur. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Chester A. Arthur is just so defined by his weird facial hair, right? And I can yeah. tell that you drew this based on his, I think you drew this based on his official presidential portrait where he's like wearing this weird fur. Well, what's funny about this one is I didn't yeah. play up his mutton chops at all. Like, just looking at his little sideburns, they are very restrained. Like, maybe too restrained. 
honestly. I kind of underplayed them. He doesn't have a lot of uh, he doesn't have a lot of hair either. Like he has a pretty small head of hair, or at least relative to the <laughs> enormous amount of hair on his face. This is obviously not a contemporary uh, contemporary cartoon. This is a cartoon of him in the New Yorker from 2017. I like the uh, <laughs> the puffiness of the mutton chops. That's very very walrusy. If you ask yes. me, but it's like like in 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 his time, there would have been no good cartoons of him, just because there was not mm -hmm. good cartoons being made. Okay, coming down to the last few ones here, I think these are the last two that I have. I have um Washington and Adams, these are the first <laughs> two presidents that I ever drew. I think that Washington is like, pretty based off of the one that you did as well. I like it. I mean, the thing is, like with like these really old presidents, like we don't really. I mean, all we have is like old oil paintings of them. And often those aren't the best likenesses that we just know because, you know, <clears throat> we know that art has gotten a lot better. Artists have become more sort of sophisticated and better at rendering the human form than they were in the 18th century. So I always kind of feel like when people are drawing old presidents, they should have a bit of fun with it. And that's what I like about these drawings is because they seem fun. Like, it seems like you're just drawing them as kind of like amusing sort of characters. And there's a lot of personality in it, which is... Uh, which is sort of fun to look at. You know, Adams looks like a, <laughs> so funny little man, and Washington, sort of weary and serious. I like the way that you drew his, his hair as well. Washington's sort of flared. I know that like a common misconception about George Washington is that he was part of the, the powdered wig set. But uh, by the time Washington was president, like wearing the formal powdered wigs had already sort of fallen out of fashion. So like men would sometimes just, they would sort of have their hair in that style, but it would be their natural hair. And I feel like the way you drew Washington, it looks more like it's his natural hair. It's funny that you like them so much because I sort of didn't, didn't look back on these two with a, a terrible amount of fondness, if, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I think like looking at them now, I kind of appreciate them a little bit more. Uh, like you said, they are kind of like more more fun. And I definitely wasn't trying as hard with them. This was a lot more informative than I thought it was going to be. I, I appreciate <laughs> you bringing yeah. this sort of history lesson about cartoon cartooning and the way the presidents have been drawn over the years to it. Well, it's something that I'm very interested in. And it is something that I've spent a lot of time researching in that. When I was, when I was young, this was a big way that I learned about American history. And about polit politics in general was by studying political cartoons and uh, getting a sense of uh, the sort of canonical depictions of uh, famous political figures. And I mean, it's it's important, right? Like you have to sort of be literate in the caricatures of American presidents and American politicians in order to be able to sort of like understand and recognize, you know, depictions of them in the sort of the broader the broader culture. And uh, the fact that American presidents are so often reduced to just a small sort of collection of sort of facial features has been a pretty consistent sort of theme of American satire and, and visual political commentary. So yeah, again, if you want to understand any of that sort of thing, you have to, you kind of have to know. And as a result, I think the more you know about that kind of stuff, the easier it becomes to just sort of like draw cartoons of them, mm -hmm. because you're basically just regurgitating the kind of conclusions that other cartoonists have made about what these people looked like and, and how to depict them in a sort of minimalistic way. See, this is where I really have to sing your praises because I don't think I've seen anyone else on YouTube sort of demonstrate that as much as you do. Like, I, I feel that I've learned so much about presidents and their personality through like the unique way that you approach your content, like bringing all of the visuals to it. I remember you, you made a video about I think you had drawn world leaders in the 90s while they were contemporaries. Oh, yeah. And I thought that that was such an interesting project that I've never seen anyone else do anything like that. And I was just thinking, like, this is such a great and unique way to learn. And I really appreciated that because your channel in particular is one that I, I feel teaches people in a very unique way and teaches people important things that we don't really see in other places. Well, thank you very much. I, that means a lot to me. I mean, I try. I try my best. <laughs> I do I do want to sort of educate people and I, I try to educate people in things that I think are important and that stimulate my imagination. In a way, I hope that that sort of is accessible to uh, to others. And I guess like, you know, to use a what I believe to be discredited uh, cliche is I, I do think that I am a visual learner. 
And so the, to the extent that I can bring sort of like a visual dimension to the explanation of some of these more serious concepts, I'm always uh, interested in doing it. Did you do a, a, did you do a drawing of Reagan? I didn't do a drawing of Reagan, actually. But I remember the drawing you did of him where he looked very goblin-like and his neck was very aged very saggy, and raggedy. Yes. Yeah. There's, um, I have a, uh, oh yeah, this one here from, <clears throat> from Gary Trudeau, this, uh, this, this <laughs> Reagan is, uh, he drew Reagan in this very sort of like grotesque kind of way with the, the sagginess and the lips and all of that. Mm -hmm. And you can see he's wearing sunglasses. This was his, this was his fun character called, uh, called Ron Head, Ron Headroom or Ron Headspace, which was like a sort of satire of uh, Max Headroom, who is a kind of like long forgotten uh, TV character from the 80s. But mm -hmm. Reagan was like the first president that, you know, because this is how old I am. I remember like seeing cartoons of him as a child. And I remember being kind of like horrified by it, but also sort of like weirdly <laughs> captivated by just how grotesque it was. Like just like these like, just like a... I mean, like, because when you're a kid, you don't really understand what you're seeing. It's just like you, you, but on like magazines and newspapers and things, you like consistently see these like cartoons of like this very gross looking old man with like saggy face and weird black hair and stuff. And there was something about it that I was just, I was fascinated by. And, uh, but it does, it comes and goes because different presidents are depicted in different ways. And some presidents just lend themselves to, grotesque depictions more than others, right? Like George W. Bush, you know, was very hated, but he has a sort of like boyish face and an innocent face. And, you know, he was handsome and, you know, not particularly old. So even though people tried to make him a sort of demonic person, his face just didn't lend itself to like overly grotesque depictions. At best, they could just portray him as like a sort of dopey idiot. But then that sort of in a way made him look kind of like innocent and, and childlike, right? I was going to say, I always thought that um, cartoons of George Bush always kind of made him look a little ape-like. Yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. A sort of like monkey a... with the big ears and the small nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lovable sort of chimpanzee or something, right? Like look at this cartoon of, of Bush as, as Curious George. Wow, those are two very like early two thousand sort of things. <laughs> so, like, look at this, like Bush. Like, he doesn't like. It's obviously like it's it's a it's a nasty cartoon, but like Bush, because he's just his face is just kind of like youthful. That he he looks kind of innocent and and kind of cute, right? Like, it's not it's not a caricature that like repulses you the way that the cartoons of Reagan were like repulsive. Yeah, well, it's funny because even. Even when I saw Bush in person recently, he was this very, like, playful sort of figure. I, I saw him give a little talk, and he, he was just joking the whole time. And he was, like, making jokes about him being a stand-up comedian. And the en entire time, I was oh, like, yeah? wow, you led our country through two wars. And you're here, like, <laughs> laughing about all this stuff. And just, he's, he seems like a very innocent figure, even in his de demeanor a lot of times, which I think has helped his post-presidency image, because I think he's been sort of forgiven especially in the trump era era for a lot of the the things he did as president and the way that he was perceived during his presidency people always like that was the case even at like at the time i remember that this was like a consistent criticism of him was that because he was sort of you know youthful and innocent and kind of dopey and playful that that made people like this is what sort of what left wing people would say that this sort of like made us like downplay like just the, the the evil of his government and like the horrors that he had unleashed that we were just so willing to forgive him as just this kind of like oh shucks gee whiz kind of guy. There was um there was a cartoonist uh, uh, Steve Bell in in Great Britain who was like he still I think is working but makes like very like notoriously like grotesque horrific kind of cartoons. But like even then, like you look at uh, here's here's George W. Bush with with Tony Blair, the British Prime Minister, as like his loyal dog. But you see, like you know, he sort of depicted him as this kind of like a Hobbit kind of like character. Mm. But even then, he looks kind of cute, you know. Like he just has like little beady eyes and big ears, and looks like kind of like childish or like yeah. a little elf or a monkey or something. Like it's not, it's hard to be mad at that. Whereas you compare like how he drew, like look at this. Actually, here's another good cartoon from him. So this is another one of, of, of Bush and Blair. And you kind of just look at like how much more comparatively grotesque Tony Blair looks <laughs> compared to George W. Bush. 
Oh, and he's got the shoe on him and everything too. Yeah, that's, the famous shoe that was thrown at him. That's such an interesting observation because I would have thought they would have demonized him a lot more in his portrayal, but they really did just lean in, I like mean, you said, into the sort of dopiness of him. I mean, I think the thing was that like Dick Cheney was so much mm. the sort of like the evil character in that administration, and so there was like lots of like cartoons of Cheney as this like glowering you know, hunchbacked, you know, dark-eyed monster. Because he lent himself well. And same with, like, Rumsfeld and and even Condoleezza Rice and, like, some of the other characters. These mm-hmm. kind of, like, war pigs that surrounded him and puppeteered him. And, like, that was sort of, like, the dominant sort of narrative was that Bush was just the idiot front man for this sort of cabal of, of sort of, like, wicked warmongers and all that. It's... I just find like the George W. Bush presidency is just really interesting to me as something to think about just because, you know, I was already an adult at that time. So like, I remember it very vividly. And like, I remember like myself having strong opinions on it and all these other characters. And it's just kind of like weird that it kind of has passed from the consciousness. And it just makes me feel like a lot of politics, like the heat of politics of the moment is ultimately just very, temporary like it just passes and it's like even now like we feel like we're in this like very high stakes very dramatic very intense polarizing moment but at some point like this will be forgotten too and like no one will really remember all of these political dramas and these characters and and even trump himself who like so dominates american life will someday be like george w bush's this kind of like forgotten person that you know people actually have to like muster effort to remember how they felt like, I feel like you could talk to, like, so many Americans and they'll, like, barely remember anything about George W. Bush or his presidency. Even though, again, like, at the time, it was just so powerful and such an intense moment for the country. And I don't know. I just find that, I find that, I find that weird. And only by getting older do you realize just the nature of how short people's memories are and how people just don't care about things for a very long period. It's funny for me because I'm, I'm 22. I was... God, I was 15 when Trump was elected. So wow. for me, politics is like, there's no, the normal politics from the before times. And then I came into yes. political consciousness with Trump riding down the escalator. That was like my awakening moment. And when I started paying attention and then everything after that just feels like it's gotten perpetually more ridiculous. And it, it's weird thinking about, like you said, the way that things change with age and with perspective. And I wonder if, when I'm your age, if I'd have a similar perspective about this time. You will. And then it'll surprise you, I'm sure, to look back as it surprises me. Because you'll see young people and you'll see how concerned they are with whoever the president is at that time and whatever sort of political situation America finds itself in at, at, at that time. And you know, I guess the the twenty forties. <laughs> <laughs> and and it will just sort of strike you as weird that like people just don't care about the past anymore and that people don't remember or have like no conscious memories or or don't really don't have opinions in the present that seem informed by the recent past you know like that's that's kind of what's most striking to me like the republican mm-hmm. party is very different now the issues that people talk about are very different And people just don't seem terribly concerned with the degree to which their current opinions are consistent with their past opinions, you know? And I think like with Trump, it's, it's obviously very obvious because Trump is just such a weird character and he disrupted the American political sort of climate in, in a number of sort of flamboyant ways. But it's like, even, even like in the Obama years, like the George W. Bush presidency i feel was already sort of like fading in consciousness and it already feels like obama is kind of like this very distant figure of the past and people don't really think much about what was debated or what their opinions were when when he was around versus now so i don't know and and that's just going to seem weird to you i think at some point as it seems weird to me in particular like when you're a person like we are who is like very interested in politics and political history and and the presidency and these kinds of things is that it can be kind of just jarring to realize that just a lot of people don't care that much about this stuff. Like (laughs) it's not, it's not because when you're really deep into this, like you're analyzing the political cartoons and you're reading the biographies and stuff, it kind of conveys an idea that like, this is like a very important part of like American culture and the American story. And then you, as you get older and you realize that like, it just isn't to a lot of people. Like, it's just a very sort of like passing thing. Like people care about it in the present when they're living through it. But the second they're not living through it anymore, it just doesn't seem worth 
any mental effort on at all. I was going to I was going to say something else, but oh yeah, and the the other thing too is like and this actually helped click in my mind like why old people support Trump even though he's so uh you know disrespectful to the presidency and all this other kind of stuff is that I can definitely imagine that by the time you're old like by the time you're in your 60s or 70s you've seen so many presidents come and go and like so many debates and all this kind of stuff that there's probably a point where you just kind of like stop really kind of like revering the presidency <laughs> and it probably just doesn't really matter that much and it's just like eh, if it's not trump it's just gonna be some other idiot so who cares right it's just like why does it why does it bother like you probably feel a lot sort of less precious about the importance of the presidency and and the idea of just like a really obnoxious person being president probably doesn't strike you as like so dramatic whereas when you're young like when you're someone like you who haven't seen that many presidents and have studied the presidency a lot, you know, the the standards of who does or doesn't get to be president probably seems like a much more kind of like high stakes thing than it does when you've seen like 10 presidents and, you know. Yeah, I mean, that that's a really interesting thing to think about. I think I appreciate the perspective of someone like yourself who is very interested in this, but is also older and has that, bit of it uh, yeah. that bit of experience because I, I tend to be more interested in politics and history than most people around me besides like college professors i think i i don't really yes. have older people that are as invested in those things as i was so i really value that perspective and i really appreciate that you have helped so many people like myself understand it so much more through the cartoons, <laughs> through your videos, and everything like well, that. Thank you. Is, uh, I think that's a great place to wrap up, Alan. And I appreciate you coming here. Thank you so much. I gave, <laughs> <laughs> you gave me the fireworks. That's nice. Yeah, we're celebrating. I didn't even do that. That just happened. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, my. Yeah. Well, no, it was a lot of fun. I'm always happy to chat with you.